Welcome to the webinar Modernization with Red Studio and TMS Software. My name is Holger Flick. I'm the owner of Flex Engineering LLC. We're located in the United States of America and I'm also the evangelist of TMS Software and I'd like to show you how you can use TMS Software components, frameworks and tools to make use of the modernization that has taken place in Red Studio in the last couple of years. First of all, let me give you a short agenda what we're going to do today in this webinar. First, I would like to compare the traditional and modern application development styles that we're used to with Delphi. And then I'm going to show how TMS covers these modern application development options. We have three pillars. One is the front end, the business logic, and finally, of course, the back end. And the business logic, of course, connects the front end to the back end, but obviously, as it's not all it does, I didn't point it out here. In the end, I'll give you plenty of time to ask questions, and hopefully I'll be able to provide the answers. With regard to traditional Delphi development, what everybody thinks of if he or she hears Delphi, they immediately associate it with VCL forms and Windows desktop application development. Actually, it's kind of sad that a lot of developers only think of Delphi in that kind of box because they think Delphi hasn't evolved. And this webinar is proof that Delphi has improved quite a lot. Back in the day, you had your form, you dropped your main menu, you dropped your grid, you dropped your navigator. And what made Delphi so special was you could connect to any database back then on the market. You used a uh, BDE connection or whatever it was called and uh, added a query and then a data source connected the user interface to the database. And back then there wasn't much thought to uh, design patterns or architecture. Everything was on one form and still today I see a lot of customers that have these tiny little tools they build and everything is on one main form all in one unit. And that's basically where the improvement took place because today's market requires applications to be flexible. You don't always have the same database. You don't always have the same operating system. You don't always have the same device that you want to use your application on. So simply building a Windows desktop application doesn't cut it anymore nowadays. So the new challenges today are you have to develop for multiple platforms, hopefully at the same time. This is what makes Delphi so good because if you want to develop for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, for mobile platforms like Android and iOS, and also for the web, you can use Delphi. And in most cases, you can do multi or cross-platform development, meaning you have one source code base and you can produce your user interface for many different platforms, operating systems, or devices. And desktop client applications also need to interact with servers, be it database servers, web servers in the cloud, or simply web servers to present your content, and web servers that provide web services with XML, JSON. This has all been introduced to Delphi over the years. Basically what this means is we have less RAD, we have more object-oriented programming concept introduced into the language. Back in the day, it wasn't really necessary to think of object-oriented programming. To be honest with you, when I started using Delphi in 1996, which seems like an eternity ago, I didn't have any schooling or training in object-oriented programming because I was simply so young that I was still going to school. And back in school, they were teaching Pascal, which was procedures and functions. So everything I did with Delphi in the beginning was really dropping buttons, double clicking them, and writing my Pascal source code in the event handler of the button. I wasn't thinking of design patterns. I wasn't thinking of frameworks. And of course, the language improvements with like anonymous functions, inline variable declaration, these came up in recent years and made it possible for Delphi to still be present on the market and also make it possible to write modern applications with Delphi. 
going on with modern challenges, this is a picture you have seen a thousand times, right? Like we have our different devices, mobile devices, laptops, desktops, and we need to connect to nowadays called the cloud, meaning like everything comes from the cloud. You have databases, you have file servers, you have web servers, and your applications need to be able to connect to those. And then all these different technologies that came around, XML, HTML, JSON being the newest one of the bunch. And then of course, thinking of the European Union with their GDPR and security requirements. And then different new technologies came around to communicate within applications or in between applications. So nowadays you can no longer just drop everything on the main form because these kind of application, well, they would be able to do the job, but it wouldn't be transparent and it wouldn't be maintainable in the long run using all these different technologies that you have to use today in order to be competitive at the market. So without going into the science or into the architecture, how to build software, I'm also not the best guy to present all that. There's definitely better suited people in the Delphi community. Thinking of Nick Hodges here with his two excellent books on Delphi development. Um, loosely coupled software building blocks are the key phrase here. And I didn't want to use any technical terms from object oriented programming. So let's just say we have three pillars with the front end, the user interface and the back end with servers and services and the business logic in between those two. And uh, what I'm going to show in this webinar today is how TMS software makes it possible or gives you the opportunity to be very efficient, to be very good and in the front line in all of these three pillars without much work and improving the Delphi development experience in all of these areas as uh, compared to not using TMS software for those skills. Of course, you're ready with Delphi 10.3.2 Rio to meet all these criteria. I'm not going to deny that. You don't need to buy a TMS software subscription or TMS software products to make it happen. However, this webinar will show you you're going to be much more efficient and effective if you use TMS software frameworks, tools, or components. So Delphi has in recent years, the runtime library has been improved quite a lot. So we have seen new functions, methods, procedures, classes for XML, JSON, HTML, HTTP, secure HTTP. We have anonymous methods. We have inline variable declarations. We got a big new parallel programming library because we have anonymous methods now that makes the um, usage of the parallel programming library so much easier. We have a compression library for zip. So no longer you need any external third party components for these tasks. And Delphi has become much bigger, much more modern than before. And of course, on the database side, a lot of people are still using like the BDE or DB Express, or even God forgive ADO. But FireDAC has been a wonderful solution um, born out of the um, AnyDAC framework that uh, makes it possible to connect to any important database management system nowadays. And the best thing is it works on all the platforms that Delphi supports right now. So you can use FireDAC for mobile development, desktop development on any of the platforms and devices that are supported. And of course, um, Embarcadero also updated the VCL extensively to make it happen. However, TMS makes it even easier for the front end, the business logic and the back end to get to your aim faster. So on the front end, we have the TMS VCL, FireMonkey and FNC UI packs that made GUI development a bliss. And for the web, we have TMS Web Core, which makes application development for the web possible. The business logic, we have TMS Aurelius, an object relational mapper. So you can use classes instead of writing the database connectivity for different databases yourself. For privacy and security certificates, you have the TMS cryptography pack. 
than if you need scientific data, if you need calculations, if you need approximations, you have the TMS analytics and physics pack. If you need to provide PDF, SVG or Excel, you have TMS Flexcell. And for static code analysis, you have TMS Fix Insight Pro to modernize your code. And on the back end, we have as a solution to migrate code from a, uh, well, let's call it a desktop application without any server art architecture. You can use TMS Remote DB to quickly build a multi tier database application. There's TMS Sparkle for web servers, web clients, and of course, the final step with web services and JSON is TMS X data. First, how would you manage all these different frameworks and products that TMS has to offer? For that, TMS offers the TMS subscription manager, which is going to be my first short demo. If you want to get an extensive video about it, this is the link where I introduce the uh, subscription manager in all detail. The subscription manager offers, after logging in with the username and password, a list of all the products that are available under your current subscription. And then you immediately see if you're up to date, like I'm here with the TMS cryptography pack, I'm up to date. I'm not up to date with the TMS scripter because I downloaded the current version, but I didn't install it. So this product also gives me the opportunity to install products, to uninstall products, and it keeps me in the loop if I'm using the current version or not. So you see on the VCLUI pack, I'm using the current version, and I'm also using the current version of VCL Web GMAPs. The best thing is you can jump between different versions quickly, and that allows you if you have one customer is still on an older version and that customer requires a patch quickly, you can switch between versions quickly without having to uh, upgrade that customer to the new version. You can provide a solution quickly. So this tool is definitely suggested when working with TMS software components or tools because this will make sure you're always using either the uh, newest version and also gives you the opportunity to install older versions quickly. If you're working in a heavily firewalled area with proxy servers, this is also covered. This was one of the questions one of our customers had recently. Yes, you can do that. We support proxies as well. Following this schema with the three pillars of development, the front end development is particularly easy with the VCL. I picked the VCL here because the VCL is the oldest of the bunch. You know, the Fire Monkey came, Fire Monkey came around afterwards, and uh, so did FNC. So VCL is somewhat considered. If you look at Facebook, people claim it's old, it's deprecated. No, it's not. VCL has multi-monitor support. It has high DPI support, and just for all the people doing .NET, look how WinForms handles those things. Okay. Multi-monitor support and high DPI support is one of the key features that has been added to the TMS component sets in recent months. So what happens if you develop a uh, application using components from the VCL UI pack? You don't have to care about multi-monitor and high DPI support because the comp these components, they have auto adaptation of control size, font size. So when you move the windows, between different monitors that have different DPI. So for example, here the webinar is being recorded on one monitor that has no zoom, so high, no high DPI involved 100%, and the other monitor is a 4K monitor. And if I move the applications between the two monitors, nothing happens visibly. Everything is scaled correctly. Try that with a standard form without all these features being activated the form will look very much smaller on the 4K screen than it does on the non-4K screen. And of course, TMS supports the new VCL image lists that have been introduced with Delphi Rio that are designed to make development of high DPI applications easier. Basically, you define 
an image list and provide your images in different sizes for different zoom levels and then the VCL will make sure that the correct image is being used. And this is a big one. TMS now not only supports their own styling, they also support the VCL styles that have been introduced in the VCL a couple of releases ago by Embarcadero. And now you can pick if you want to use the VCL styles that are being deployed with Delphi or if you still want to use the TMS styles. And this makes these components so sweet. You can still use your old TMS styling that has been introduced years ago, but you also can pick and migrate over to the new VCL styles developed by Embarcadero. And of course, there have been many more components. For example, the responsive list is one of those components that is a list component that takes into account the fact if you resize your form, that the list is then resizing and displaying the inner elements in a nicely manner. Um, so these components are built kind of like if you think of web applications or websites nowadays, if you resize them, you get different um, displays on a mobile device than you get on a web page on a desktop system. And this is how these responsive components work. They're displayed differently if you have small forms and if you extend the size of the form, the content inside of this list is being presented differently. Before I show a demo of the new VCL UI pack, some words to the other frameworks that are for front-end development. Of course, TMS offers full UI control sets for FireMonkey. It's called the TMS FMX UI pack. And of course, these are up to date for the current Delphi version. But if you want to use the same graphic control for every framework, meaning VCL, FireMonkey, and of course, TMS also supports Lazarus, the LCL, and the web. Then you can pick the FNC component, meaning you use the same component in the VCL, in FireMonkey, in Lazarus, and in the web, meaning same properties, same events, same methods. And you only need to write all your business logic once because the code is the same on every framework. Then you have to pick FNC. And there's lots of content on the TMS webpage that gives you a clue what FNC is all about in more detail. I'm going to give the link to those videos at the end of this webinar so you can dig deeper if you're interested. Before going to the business logic, let me show you the example for the VCL UI component pack. Here you see the VCL style demo that ships with the VCL UI component pack. It uses all or most of the new components that are shipping with this component pack. And it's also a pretty good use case how you can use the uh, components in a high DPI multi-monitor environment. Sadly, of course, because this webinar is being recorded from one monitor. I can't show you the multi-monitor approach, but I can show you the styling for sure. Just a brief introduction to all the components that are being used. We have here a uh, smooth gauge from the smooth component set, which is included, of course. We have here the um, advanced navigation bar, which um, originated back in the day. You remember Outlook, I think, was the first Microsoft application that used these controls. On the top here, we have a simple panel with images. Here you see uh, the branch responsive list, where you can see that these items are being aligned according to the size of the screen. And this is the planner control, mimicking the Outlook calendar in a way with a timeline with different days and of course there's different views available it is very easy to place events inside of this calendar you can use html you can use images inside of events and one of the very new controls that tms released in the last or in the last two years is the kanban board if you've ever worked with trello for example kanban 
is you is is the principle used where you have ideas and every idea is basically getting different kind of um, events placed on this idea and you can expand or basically I'm going to show it to you at runtime you can expand and collapse different ideas of course Kanban in the automation or logistics is something totally different I don't know why people call this the Kanban board but um, it has nothing to do with barcodes and scanning and that kind of stuff what it means in the automation technology so going farther here we have the DB advanced grid which is one of the most traditional components I would say that TMS has to offer I think they started with the string grid back in the day this is the database version of it and here we have simple images that are linked to pop-up menus let's run the application so here's the running demo with the advanced list showing as an example an image with text here you see that you can select all the events even hints are available and the Kanban board you can collapse and expand not only every idea but you can also expand and collapse different things and these items also have the possibility for title text and images and not only do you have um, possibility to to write text inside you can also write HTML as you're used to from many 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 controls that TMS has to offer um, here the navigation bar all the features are included that you're used to but as said this is all not only available for this DPI setting if I moved it to my other screen everything would be resized automatically everything would look exactly the same and anybody who tried to do this manually um, knows how much work it is to do this manually so this is supported by the controls themselves now and here if you right click this gear you can switch between the different styles and activated in this demo are Windows Luna Windows 10 dark let me switch to the dark style because it's the most visible change the window for a little time disappears and then gets reloaded again but here you see now we have everything in a dark scheme and switching for example to to some other one here you see that everything gets displayed or themed differently than it was before so even the window gets drawn differently and uh, that was the main intent to make it easy for you so how easy is it really doing these things let's look at the source code how does the switching look it's really a one line you simply set the style to the name of the style that you want to do of course we need to do the maintenance that the dot in front of the pop-up menu is updated but that's it it's basically a call to the style manager the style manager is the VCL control or the VCL class it is nothing from TMS this is really something that's included in Delphi now one more word to front-end development with regard to web applications TMS released last year the so-called TMS web core application framework it's you can write 100% Delphi source code and you can use the Delphi form editor with hundreds of URI controls and you can also include third-party JavaScript frameworks when you need them and now since version I think it's 2.0 we introduced TMS web core electron electron is a framework that allows you to run JavaScript applications as desktop applications and TMS web core has full support for the electron framework which makes it even possible to access resources from the client that your application runs on like the file system and uh, that on top of being able to build progressive web applications with TMS web core progressive web applications are web applications that have an offline mode so for example if you have an application on the iPhone you can run that application on your iPhone or Android device without being connected to the internet even if it's a uh, web application and how that works is 
that TMS Web Core creates a full-blown JavaScript web application using a transpiler that transfers your Pascal source code into JavaScript. And the nice thing associated with that is if it's JavaScript, you can run it on any web server and in any browser because JavaScript is the language of the web. So there are no constraints there what you can and cannot do. As soon as you can use it with TMS Web Core, it's being transferred to JavaScript. And the nice thing is during running the applications, you can also debug, select certain lines, and uh, you even get the Pascal line and you don't have to deal with JavaScript at all. So if you set a breakpoint in the browser in your source code, it is all Delphi Pascal code. It won't be JavaScript, even though the browser, of course, executes the JavaScript. The uh, TMS team did amazing work to make that happen. Just to show how easy it is to do, so, uh, just to show how easy it is to build a web application, if you install TMS Web Core, which also has a trial version, under the Delphi tab, you get TMS Web, TMS Web application. If you wanted a progressive web application, you had a template, and you also had a template for the Electron application. Let's stay with the simple stuff. And here you have a form, the main form. It works just like a Delphi application, and you have TMS Web controls. Here you see how many controls are available. Most of them are named exactly like you used from Delphi. So instead of T edit, you have the T web edit. And instead of T web button, you have, oh, sorry, instead of T button, you have T web button. And writing applications works exactly the same way as you used from Delphi. Um, you can double click a button, you get the click event, and then you can say, web edit one dot text full code completion everything is hello world and you run the application so there's no external tools involved everything works out of the ide and here's your web application and as you click the button you get the hello world so this is not a big example but this runs in the browser and this way you can build web applications really quick and we have not hundreds but we have quite a lot of videos available on the tms web page or on the tms um, software tv channel on youtube which i'm going to give you the information on later on so if you're interested in web development on the front end side have a look at tms web core going on with the business logic um, with TMS, you're able to use object-oriented program for all your needs if you use TMS Aurelius as your object relational mapper. So your business logic then does not depend on a certain database because we all know that SQL changes from database provider to database provider. Microsoft SQL looks different than Oracle SQL, looks different than MySQL, looks different than Postgres, looks different than MySQL. So there, every, ha every SQL dialect has its own features. So if you don't want to bother with that, keep to your classes in Delphi and leave the database to TMS Aurelius. Also, if you need to handle GDPR in the European Union, or have other stuff that requires encryption or certificates, use the TMS cryptography pack. Everything is in there that you need. And of course, you get full source code. That's always important when it comes to security and encryption because you have to provide proof how it works. So TMS cryptography pack is the best alternative there. And if you need to do complex analytical, numerical, and physical calculations, look no farther. You have the TMS Analytics and Physics Pack. And if you want to support Microsoft Excel or Adobe PDF without any additional libraries, for Adobe PDF, we now also have functionality in FNC, but if you are interested in reporting and generating PDF or graphics after that, um, you don't need Microsoft Excel installed on your developer machine or Adobe PDF Acrobat installed. So this is also ideal for reporting with web services or any other web architecture. Look no farther, use Flexel. TMS Flexel gives you all of that. Just to give you an idea how powerful the... Uh, just to give you an impression how complex this mathematical pack that I just 
mentioned is like these are all values that are being measured on a uh, test stand for mining fans or tunnel fans and we measure the frequency the air volume and the pressure that this fan basically creates and out of these you can generate or calculate the so-called characteristic curve of a fan for the different um, frequencies and uh, this is just test data so um, but you can see here we have like all the points that have been measured and these curves have all been calculated by the TMS um, pack using uh, approximation fitting algorithms and all that sort of stuff so this is very complex and also the data even though it looks like oh this is a data set of some sort yes it is but we use um, Aurelius in the background and Aurelius is able to provide um, data for a data source so you don't need to learn anything new if you work with Aurelius you can still use the same data set components or database components for your graphical user interface to bind the data um, so that makes it pretty powerful as well and uh, just because um, the analytics and physics pack is a little bit the unknown in the TMS world but this is very powerful if you need to do any mathematical calculations or um, even if you have um, functions that you need to do calculations with this is the way to go you can do a lot of things with that finally to the back end we have TMS Sparkle for web servers and web services and on top of TMS Sparkle we have two products one of the products is TMS Remote DB which is primarily designed to migrate single tier applications to multi-tier applications quickly and for that reason the focus from or the focus of Remote DB is high performance database access there is no um, focus on making the protocol between the client and the server transparent so the, the 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 format or the protocol being used between server and client is not something like xml or json that is something that is highly optimized for performance and might be the solution you're looking for if you right now have a single tier application i want to make it multi-tier i'm going to show a demo for that real quick um, just to finish off the thought with a back end which product to choose if you want to make the step to a web service with full-blown JSON support and all that sort of stuff, you need to use TMS X data. But I suggest make the step with RemoteDB first if you have an existing application and use the time that you gain because the customer no longer is basically saying, hey, we need this, we need this, we need this. They have their multi-tier application. They can work with it. And then you have the time that you need in order to transfer to the totally modern modernized architecture with TMS X data then you can auto generate your web services from existing databases you can write custom services that you need for example that provide PDF documents Excel documents all that kind of stuff but you can also use SQL if you want to do the migration quickly then uh, you don't need to use the query language the TMS X data um, brings with it because TMS X data also uses classes that are being generated from a databases and these classes are all Aurelius classes which do not look any different from normal Delphi classes but you can use a custom built query language that um, has the, 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 the advantage to uh, SQL that it looks the same for any database system that you use but if you still want to write database dependent um, code meaning the web servers cannot be switched between different databases then you can use SQL and that is also possible with Xdata of course with TMS web core applications if you build a web application you have full design time support if you use TMS Xdata on the back end for VCL applications you have type safe integration reason for that is the X data server uses interfaces um, based on the databases and custom service methods that you write and these interfaces can be integrated in your VCL client applications and thus you have type safety 
It is open, of course, for any desktop, web or mobile app because it uses the standardized REST protocol using JSON for data transport. Of course, all the uh, bells and whistles are included. You have um, compression, you have JWS for authentication. Everything is possible, extendable, so you can go from a very simple X data server that you use internally for a company, but you can build huge APIs that you offer to other customers with um, user authentication, authorization, and all that stuff. The Another key feature is that you have full documentation of this REST API with Swagger UI out of the box. You, you no longer need to go to the Swagger UI website. Swagger is basically included in your server. If you want the documentation, you can look at it right away in any web browser. Before finishing this webinar, I'd like to show you one final demonstration um, how you can migrate existing database applications into a multi-tier architecture efficiently and quickly. Um, first of all, let me show you a standard application that you've built a thousand times. Here's your view that shows the data. Here it's a tree view. This example is available um, as part of a web series that I did for TMS. So the, you find it on the YouTube feed that I'll give you the information later. And uh, information is being displayed in a tree view. And I connect to a Microsoft SQL database and select certain records. Let me show you the SQL database real quick. FireDAC, um, Microsoft SQL Server. I use a database. That's the interesting thing. You can download this database from the internet. It's a free database provided by Lee County. And this database shows um, points of interest in Lee County, Florida. And um, you have like the name of the attraction or whatever it is, the street address, um, city, zip code, and all that kind of stuff. And you can nicely group by type and um, the uh, city that it's located in as the two categories for your tree view. But that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in right now is to show you the query. So here you see select star from POI order by type city name, execute, you get the data. And if I run this application, here we go. You see the tree view, for example, we have one airport or we have two airports in Fort Myers. One is page field. The other one is RSW beach access. There's beaches everywhere here in Florida. And it's nicely grouped by different uh, categories and stuff. This is all being done using a FireDeck connection and a FireDeck query. And the query has fields. Okay. So this is how you've built it a thousand times, meaning you connect directly to your database server using the FireDeck connection and you have your query. Now, this is not very flexible because you're depending on the FireDeck libraries, right? As soon as there is an update in FireDeck, you need to update your application. As soon as your customer decides, oh, we don't want to use MySQL anymore or Microsoft SQL anymore. We want to switch over to Postgres. You have a problem. You need to change your application, right? So that makes it difficult. And definitely a multi-tier application would be better. But you have all your source code written towards this query component and making changes would be a lot of work. I agree with you on that. So what I'm going to show you now is using remote DB to make this migration easy. What you do is you use the wizard that TMS remote DB comes with in order to generate a server. You find this under TMS remote DB VCL server. And what you end up with is a form or a data module, I should be more precise, that has the remote DB server and so-called Aurelius connection, which connects to the FireDeck connection. Now you're going to say, oh, this is again depending on FireDeck. Yes. But what you do is you build this server now for your Microsoft SQL database, right? And then you get a customer that has an Oracle database. So you use the same 
you basically create another server, which has also a FireNet connection, but to the Oracle database. But your client application, that is the key, won't change because you provide your remote DB server URL, which here is localhost 80 um, flex. That's my server that's running. So if I run this server here, server started at this URL. And now I do no longer use the data set application. I created a second application. I simply copied the existing application. And what I did is I exchanged the fire deck connection to a T remote DB database. See that I kept it even connection and I changed the query to TX data set. And the amazing thing is if I go into the field editor, it's still the same fields. And here, the source code, no change, I can run it like this. And now I no longer connect to the Microsoft SQL database directly. No, I connect to this server here, right? And the output is the same because this remote DB connects to the database. So let's say you have another customer that requires a different database. You provide a different server, but your application stays exactly the same. To prove that I really, um, well, connect to the server, let me run this again. Here you see it can't connect and I don't get any data. Hopefully the last example showed you how powerful remote DB is. And then you can go on the next step, gain, having gained time with a customer that you already have the multi-tier approach and go to X data using JSON for transport and making it more open. But the performance of remote DB will always better. We have to admit that because we are not using any um, protocol based on JSON or XML. It's, it's an optimized, very high performance protocol um, that's compressed and using binary. So we're already at the end of this webinar and uh, I'd like to point out some consulting and training opportunities. My company Flex Engineering is certified in particular for Xdata, Aurelius, Remote DB and uh, the web application development with web core um, also fnc for cross-platform applications and of course i provide on-site and remote training as you're used to from my videos if you want more information because we have other partners in the certified partner consulting network that tms software offers on this url because there might be also a partner in your area. If you're, for example, located in Germany, we have partners in Germany, in Belgium. And uh, of course, I also come to Germany and uh, do a training in German if you are interested. So finally, all the videos that give you more information about all the topics that we covered in this webinar today. We have, for example, as you can see here on the TMS Software TV channel on YouTube, um, the tree view example that I just breached shortly, which shows you how to build this tree view first with a data set, uh, virtual mode, using icons and all that sort of stuff. But there's also videos for Flexel, there's videos for Aurelius, there's videos for WebCore. That is the channel where you get training videos for free. Um, so you can learn at your own pace. A lot of demos are available. And um, so you don't need to rely on our individual consulting and training. There's a lot on our channel. If you like it, I would be very happy if you click the, click the uh, subscribe button for the channel. So we see that there is interest in more videos for further training. So thank you very much for your interest in uh, modernizing your development experience with TMS software components. And I'm available for questions now. Fantastic. Thank you, Holger, for that really interesting uh, presentation on all the cool stuff going on with TMS and how to use it with Rad Studio and Windows 10. If anybody does have questions, feel free to put them in the question panel to the right there, and we'll do our best to get them answered for you. Uh, we'll point out that the slides as well as the uh, schedule for the upcoming webinars is there uh, in the uh, handouts panel. 
Also, we'll be adding an additional webinar here shortly, so do stay tuned to that uh, subscription or the page. I'll put the link in for that that has all the webinars so that you can find the uh, other ones as they get added. Are you there, Holger? Yes, I'm here at the gym. Thank you so much for the introduction. Absolutely, thank you. So we cover. I covered already a couple of questions in the chat while the uh, session was going on. Um, let me just sum that up real yeah. quick. Exactly. Because, yeah. um, the biggest question most likely was uh, about TMS Web Core, if it was tied to the version of Delphi or the um, if you use professional architect or enterprise. No, um, obviously, um, if you want to use TMS products, for example, Xdata, you can't use FireDAC if FireDAC is not included in Delphi because it's an Embarcadero extension. However, um, there is Microsoft SQL support and um, SQL Lite support included natively in Aurelius and Xdata, so you don't need any other database components for that. And uh, there is no server restriction in TMS Web Core, meaning you do not need the Enterprise Edition in order to start uh, a server to debug your web application using Delphi. Then uh, feedback, um, the all access subscription, yes, I agree. Um, it's the best deal there is, especially if you want to do um, development from all the different pillars that I mentioned in the presentation. If you need front end, back end and business logic, all, all access is definitely um, the best solution price-wise and with the subscription manager really good um yeah i'm a Linux. big fan i'm just going to add here i'm a big fan of the tms software as well you guys do a lot of great stuff there and it's always exciting to see what you're working on so Not i'll that pass I, it I guess, on to bruno thank you <laughs> i recommend that you get the all access thing i mean what uh holger's showing here is great so yeah get all access get all that good stuff and uh take advantage of this Okay, there is a question about Linux. Yes, um, there has been a blog post um, from our engineer, Wagner Landgraf, on the TMS webpage to deploy Xdata to Linux and to compile it for Linux. Um, there is no wizard right now that you can just, you know, you click it and uh, it's a Linux application. That's not there right now, as far as I know, but it's definitely possible to deploy it to Linux. I don't remember exactly how it worked, but it's on the web page, on the blog, Google, um, Xdata, Linux, and TMS, and you should get it. I think um, I found a link in for it. There's a question here about the uh, TMS web core. Is that Delphi specific, or does it work on Windows as well? Or, uh, sorry, C++ as well. Uh, sadly, it's it's based on a uh, transpiler. I had to learn that word myself, that it's not called a compiler. Basically, what it does is um, the Delphi source code or Pascal source code is being compiled or it generates JavaScript. And uh, this JavaScript um, compiler is only available for Pascal and not for C++, sadly. I think, is it the, like a, yeah, the, I found the blog post. I'll put it in here for the X data on Linux. It's a five part or more se series that uh, covers that. It looks like that video it looks like good stuff there. I'm just flying over the, uh, yeah, the, um, I can only agree that remote DB is very, very useful. I hope that came over in the webinar because it's, it's something that is a little bit lost on the web page as a little bit niche for this product, but it's, it's a great product. If you want to lift an existing application into a multi-tier environment, um, that makes it so much easier and gives your team time to investigate which route to take afterwards web service wise, because um, you can really simply, as I showed in the demonstration, you can simply exchange your connection with the remote DB database and you exchange your query with the X data set and everything works. I didn't change anything in the code. You can even leave like the code that has been generated with the uh, FireDAC data set, like the fields and everything, they use the same properties and methods and events. And it's really easy to transfer your application that way. Uh, one of our other MVPs said, I think TMS is excellent supplier of components. Web Core is great and Xdata Remote DB very useful. Virtually all of my commercial apps use TMS very heavily. I frequently get questions about how can I do this with 
Delphi or C++ Builder? And, and more often than not, my answer is check out TMF because <laughs> there it, it they certainly does add a lot to uh, the functionality that you get out of the box. Uh, so. yeah, and, and what yeah. I like is if you have these pillars in the back of your head and have the um, all access subscription with the subscription manager, you can really pick what you need and it all integrates nicely. And uh, something that didn't come through in this webinar so much, everything integrates into the Delphi IDE nicely. And not only for the current version, that was also a concern somebody had, do I have to update? No, you don't have to update your Delphi version necessarily in order to still um, use TMS components. Um, as far as I know, we still support a lot of older versions, um, even for, for newer technologies like TMS Web Core. Um, but this becomes less and less an issue, I have to say, because Embarcadero switched to the subscription model, which is great for you to stay up to date. Um, there's the question about online training um, for TMS Web Core. Um, look at the penultimate slide. There is a link with our partner network of cer certified consulting. And also the last slide has um, our video feed on YouTube. There's lots and lots of resources for web development and backend development, and also the opportunity to get in touch with actual people who visit you or do remote consulting, remote training for you. Um, is there a I YouTube will, about? I was gonna say, I will add, why, why you may not need to upgrade to use this stuff, I, I personally would recommend that you are on update subscription on the latest version because there's lots of other great new features in there. But if you do have code uh, in an older uh, that you haven't migrated yet to the latest version, that's certainly fine. Or certainly, you support, it's good that that's support as well. But there definitely are benefits to being on the latest version. We're always adding new features and bug fixes and stuff. Yeah, I agree, especially for the VCL with the multi-monitor support and with the new image list. It's highly recommended for me as a consultant to uh, um, upgrade because then you're able to, um, every laptop you buy nowadays has a 4K display with high DPI, so you kind of have to update in order to to, to um, deliver software to your customers that supports their displays. Otherwise, it's just going to look plain ugly. And the new version of the VCL that comes with Rio has this great new image list that make it really easy to supply different um, sizes for your images. And um, I'm quite certain there's a lot of more good stuff coming in that um, department, especially if you consider like what TMS is doing right now, that you don't need to do anything, that everything is scaled and resized automatically without you you doing having to do nothing, you know. There is a question about Electron. Yes, there is a YouTube about an Electron app. Actually, there's several videos, um, how to build desktop applications with TMS Web Core. Um, we have an image editor, for example, as our primary application, which shows how the HTML CSS world can basically merge with the desktop world. We use CSS to um, modify images, filter images, change colors, and do that all, all that sort of stuff inside of the browser and not using any image library. Um, TMS Sparkle is... Um, you have two possible, TMS Sparkle is basically the, um, hopefully I, I don't, HTTP uh, web servers and web services for mm -hmm. Delphi, but um, TMS Sparkle always has like a very individual customizable solution and it also comes with predefined servers that make it easier for you. Um, this is shown by the fact that X data is completely built on top of Sparkle. So basically think of, if you think of a web service that you want to build manually, you can use TMS Sparkle. And if you want a web service that automatically um, serializes database objects like tables or um, other objects like Delphi objects, into JSON, or then you would pick X data because all that functionality is built into that. There's a question here about moving, if there's a, some sort of example or demo of moving a VCL application to web core. Uh, we haven't, or I haven't done a video of that so far. 
Um, there is several approaches how to do that because I know for a fact we had on the blog a couple of months ago an example of that. I, I, uh, I will take that down as a note to myself and then I'll uh, publish it on my blog, something like that, because there has been, I know this for a fact, there has been some uh, work being done to make the process easier but I don't know how far that is. So the answer to your question is, not to evade the question, is I haven't done a video so far, and as far as I know, there is no video. So that is definitely something uh, I'll take down as a note. It would seem like uh, you could migrate, or you could move from VCL to the FNC framework. And then once you've done that, you could probably you could look at moving it to WebCore. It, it, certainly yes. if there are any windows specific things you're doing that would be uh an issue plus you'd have to the application concept changes when you're running in the browser versus on a desktop but yeah it, it really depends how complex your uh, desktop application is because um every web core application is also always single page so as soon as you open up several windows at the same time you're no longer talking about a simple migration but um what you might have seen watching the webinar is that the components, the names are almost the same. So if you have a T button on your form, it's it's going to be a T web button. But as soon as you, for example, use not just a TDB grid, but a grid that's from uh, TMS software, it's not as easy because then you have to use the grid that's supplied with TMS web core and then Jim is right, it might be easier to migrate your existing VCL application to the FNC framework first, which allows you to develop for the VCL and for the web at the same time with the same components. Uh, there's an interesting question here from Miguel. He says, uh, I've always been a big fan of TMS components. Nevertheless, as Delphi and C++ develop, as a Delphi to C++ developer, it's not always clear how to select from all the available UI components. Can you elaborate on what are the differences between the, the FNC component studio instead of VCL component studio or FMX component studio. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty. I ha even have that in the webinar on one of the slides. So VCL, um, as far as I know, is available for both Delphi and C++. Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. And um, FireMonkey is Embarcadero's across cross-platform solution. Um, off the VCL back in the days, but they're of course going very separate ways. FireMonkey is vector-based and VCL is bitmap-based. So FireMonkey is the actually. I think they're both. I mean, they're they, they're technically I think both bitmap-based. Originally there was a differentiation like that, but I think now they are both bitmap-based. Oh, okay. I so. FireMonkey is basically for cross-platform development, and VCL is only for Windows. And uh, so because of this difference, you have different classes. The classes have different names, different properties. So TMS decided in the beginning to have like the VCL component pack for the VCL and then their FMX component pack for FireMonkey. And uh, then the team had the idea because it's it has become so difficult, especially if you develop both for the VCL and for FireMonkey, it has become very difficult to remember the uh, property names and event names because they're kind of similar, but they're still different. For example, if you think of a button, a button has in FireMonkey, it doesn't have the caption property, but it's the text property. So to get rid of all these differences, TMS basically um, built their own framework called FNC, which covers the VCL, FireMonkey, the web, and even Lazarus. So you can use the same component, drop it on a VCL form. You still develop a Windows application, but you use not the standard VCL component, you use an FNC component. And you, if you separate your source code, meaning you separate the graphical user interface and the business logic, then you can use the same um, code both for the VCL, for FireMonkey, and for the web because the component property names, the method names, and the events are going to be the same over all the frameworks. And that is something you, 
usually do not have if you develop with the VCL or FireMonkey, or, and of course, Lazarus, which is completely different. So is there a trade-off? Is, is FNC a superset of the VCL Component Studio and FMX Component Studio? So for example, if you get FNC, do you have um, all of that in there, or is FNC a subset where it's just uh, gives you the ability to use the standard FireMonkey components or VCL components? No, FNC is a completely different set of components. So you have an FNC button, which it has nothing to do with the VCL button or the FireMonkey button. It just behaves the very same way. And if you look at the source code, of course, if you look at the source code that the Delphi compiler uses in a VCL application, there is going to be a T button in there somewhere. And if you look at the source code for the FireMonkey, of course, there's going to be a mapping to the FireMonkey control somewhere. However, the amount of controls or the selection of controls is completely diff uh, independent. So if you use FNC, um, you have the FNC component set, and these components are similar to the ones that are in the VCL and in the FireMonkey, of course. But the, um, the advantages, of course, are that with FNC, you can point to any framework um, without having to learn the same component for every different framework. You learn a component once. For example, there is a grid in there. You learn this grid once, and then you can use it in the VCL, FireMonkey, or on the web. You don't have to train your developers for three different frameworks, basically. Okay, so if you were starting a new application, un completely new, and it was going to be Windows, if it was going to be cross-platform, uh, if it was going to be cross-platform with the web, you definitely want to choose FNC. If it was going to be Windows and mobile or mobile, you want to choose uh, FMX. If it was going to be Windows only, would, when would you... Would you stick to VCL or would you recommend going with FM, the FMX studio or the FNC studio? If it's going to be, <clears throat> if there's ever going to be the slightest um, possibility that it's going to be like we're doing VCL now and then it's going to be web, I'm always going to try to use the FNC components. However, I'm not going to, and that's why they're still there. Um, I'm not going to make any secret about the fact if you need to build a Windows application quickly, and you have your team of developers that are used to the VCL, you're probably gonna stick using the TMS VCL component studio and not gonna start using FNC right away. However, if there is ever the slightest possibility for it to go cross-platform or mobile, use FNC components because then there's not gonna be any migration issues if you put the very same components on a FireMonkey form that you put on a VCL form because the FNC components are gonna behave the same way. And it's not only that they um, are to, that the coding is the same for the different platforms, but also the design and the appearance of the components is the same on the different frameworks. That's what's the most important aspect that Bruno Ferenc, the owner of TMS, always points out to me is like um, the VCL has like font and, and the font has a color, a background color and foreground color. And this is all at different places for FireMonkey. You have a stroke, you have a brush. And, and these kind of things are all being unified if you use FNC. So you don't even have to think about what you do in FireMonkey or what you do in the VCL, you always amend the same properties and you get the same result on all the frameworks. And if you now include the web in that kind of equation, you know how powerful it is because on the web, you would have to learn CSS and that's all being handled for you if you use FNC. So Miguel points out or a couple things. The, he says, is there a performance impact of FNC instead of VCL or FMX components? This first no. question. No, there is not, um, because internally, of course, um, there is the compilation, the compiler uses the, the libraries that come with Delphi, so there's not going to be um, any trade-off. Of course, there is going to be some, some trade-off with regards to to painting certain certain things and stuff in order to keep it cross-platform. However, as FNC uses the VCL if it's a VCL application and uses FireMonkey if it's a FireMonkey application. It uses the optimizations that are provided by Delphi or, Delphi or 
Embarcadero, so to speak. So it relies on the framework that you use with it. So there is no uh, performance handicap of any sort. Now, um, he also said, went on to say that last he checked, the VCL component pack has a lot more components than the either FMX or FNC. And I guess that was kind of my impression is that the VCL pack, or generally my, um, when I talk to people about the differences, VCL is generally a lot large, a lot more components available for it in general, and uh -huh. more established, more mature. FireMonkey you have the advantages of being able to go across platform. Is so would you rank as far as number of components or size of the packs? VCL would have the most, followed by FMX, followed by FNC, or how does the FNC fit into that? Yeah, I agree with that statement. But the reason is not that we're too lazy to build new components. The reason is simply that TMS is there since 1996 and has been building these VCL components. There was nothing else. And then, uh, pardon me, I don't know when FireMonkey came along, but it's it's basically the time that has been in the, the, these components packs have been in development. And another reason why there is less components in the FireMonkey pack is that FireMonkey works differently. For example, in the VCL, we have a T labeled edit. You don't need stuff like that in FireMonkey because in, in FireMonkey, you can create new components by grouping existing components. So the need for components in FireMonkey is not always there as it is there in in the VCL. And also um, another reason is because why there is less components in FNC right now is every component has to make sense in a cross-platform sense. So for example, if you have a component in the VCL component pack that um, wraps your T application VCL object on the form, it doesn't make any sense for web application, for example, because it's simp there, there simply doesn't exist the same kind of thing. So because of that, there's also less components. But the FNC component pack has been extended in the last couple of years. I would say the last year there has been a major, major development increase on that department because um, the necessity for the web components to be there. And then it only makes sense to use FNC to have the very same components on the desktop in the VCL or in FireMonkey as well, or in the mobile devices. So for that reason, for example, a month ago, TMS released a, uh, a, a library to generate PDF documents. And that is built on top of FNC and not on top of FireMonkey or VCL. But of course, you can use these PDF libraries or PDF extensions. I don't want to say library in VCL applications, FireMonkey applications, and web applications. Um, that So the reason primarily is because FNC is rather new. That's the number one reason why there's less than in the VCL or in FireMonkey. OK, that makes sense. There's a, a question here about, oh, Miguel said, thanks a lot. Uh, I'll go ahead and finish on this since we're on the topic. Historically, uh, there have been lots of top vendor of interweb components. Now you have TMS WebCore. Um, why would people, what would you recommend advantages of WebCore uh, over the interweb, TMS interweb component studio? The it's it's two completely different approaches. Let's let's keep it like at that because like uh, interweb requires. Um, if, if you started it compiles an exe file and you start that exe file and with tms web core you generate a javascript file um, that is your application you need nothing else you just need this file that you generate so you can deploy it on any web server there is in this world without having any library dependencies and the sorts and uh, the uh, honestly i haven't looked at interweb in a long time so um and it's also not my place to make comparisons but um the number one advantage of tms web core in my opinion is that you get a javascript application that's completely independent of any um yeah of any web servers so you basically can use it under any operating system linux windows or source of and uh, the need for 
components. Um, TMS Web Core is very open to other JavaScript libraries as well. So it's very easy to include, and TMS does it, jQuery UI components because it generates JavaScript. So what TMS needs to provide in order to be compatible to a certain JavaScript library is the mapping for the object inspector and the designer in order to support that component. Okay, uh, so the question here from Clark says, do you recommend TMS Delphi over JavaScript bootstrap apps? I'm assuming he means for the web. Um, he writes heavily for manufacturer ERPs and why? Um, the reason is you can use bootstrap with TMS Web Core really easily. So this has not been in this webinar, but there's a video online that goes into great detail where I built um, an example where we start off with a uh, designed application where you have, um, where you show data on the, on the web page and the design is completely done in the Delphi form designer. But at some point, we're going to use another option we have with TMS Web. We can basically say, use the whole design from an HTML file, which is tied to the, to the form. And Delphi basically only delivers the dynamic controls, like the edit controls, the list boxes, the map, the grid. But the positioning, the styling, and everything is done in HTML and CSS. And of course, this CSS can use Bootstrap and other JavaScript libraries that are out there. So what I'm saying is if you use TMS Web Core, you can still use your familiar Delphi um, language to build your application logic, but you can also cooperate with somebody that is very good in web design, building web design with HTML and CSS. So that is one of the major advantages of Web Core. And you can tie the only communication you have to do with your web designer is the HTML tags that you want to access with your TMS Web Core application need an ID tag. So for example, if you think of a login screen where you have username and password, you can do whatever you want in your HTML design, but there need to be two um, edits, one for the username, one for the password. So you basically talk to your web designer and the web designer says the username is ID username and the password is ID password. And then in your TMS Web Core application in Delphi, you have two edit controls on the form. And then there is a property called element ID and you set that to ID username and ID password. Develop the application like you want it. And as soon as you run it, TMS Web Core is going to take the design from the HTML and CSS, but it's going to place the components exactly where you want them to be. I must say there's been a lot of, um, I, I, I commented on the, the Web Core versus IntraWeb one here. Also, I'll just point this out. The Web, web Core, the big difference in my mind is Web Core has the transpiler, like you write Delphi code that can run in the browser. Whereas with IntraWeb, <laughs> You can do that with uh, JavaScript, or they also support TypeScript or any of those other uh, other ones. You probably could do if you were creative, combine the two together. <laughs> but really, IntraWeb is a backend system for building web apps. So IntraWeb, you're writing a program that runs in the backend that produces a web interface. Whereas Web Core is at least, and you can correct me on this, Olger, is a front-end application. So you're with WebCore, you're developing the front-end um, that runs in the client, in the browser, and then can connect to a back-end system. Correct. Uh, with InterWeb, it kind of combines the front-end and the back-end because you are, uh, but the application itself is running on the back-end. Yeah, the, the only thing why I was um, very, very short in my remarks, because I don't know the current development status of, of IntraWeb, how they implement Ajax, for example, how that all works. And before I say anything wrong about a competing product, I'd rather say this is how it works in TMS Web Core. And please have a look at IntraWeb, how they achieve their different things so, so I don't step on anybody's toes. <laughs> IntraWeb, IntraWeb is still a great framework. I know people are still using it and very happy with it. Um, so. 
you don't need to abandon interweb and move to webcore necessarily although you know if you're starting a new project consider you know you can compare the pros and cons of each but um last i looked so you can use interweb with bootstrap and uh, you know you can do custom css and all the great stuff like that but the big difference is that uh in interweb you're writing you're writing something that lives on the server and then you can use typescript or JavaScript to write for the Ajax portion that runs in the browser. Yeah, or because of the lot that's built in as well. So yeah, because of the time constraints, I obviously couldn't mention like on the back end, if you write your TMS Web Core application on the back end, you can use also anything you want. You can write your back end in other programming languages, and of course, very interesting for Embarcadero, the Embarcadero Red server can be used on the back end as well. So that's how flexible it is. Yep. There's a question here about performance of the web server created by X data. Uh, is are there yeah, stress tests or other tests that have been run with that that you can share performance benchmarks? Um, I'm I'm actually working. I, I looked into it, and uh, because you know how it is, Jim, there's always something else to do. Yes. I did a, I did a stress test because like here in, in in Florida in the United States, they have a database of all the registered company names LLCs. It's a giant database with millions of records, and I put that into X data and did a query, and it performs really, really well. Of course, Remote DB is going to be better because Remote DB doesn't do the serialization to JSON, and that costs a lot because just think about what it takes to transfer um, pure text compared to having a binary product that compresses. So, but even with huge amounts of data, um, X data performs really, really well because um, there has been lots of optimizations on the backend side. And another reason for that is that X data, of course, is also bridging to your database. And this bridge can either be, for example, FireDAC or any other database connectivity that you use. So in the case of FireDeck, which I know very well because it's included in Delphi, all the optimizations and performance um, things you get from FireDeck, you're also gonna get it with Xdata. So basically what I'm saying is with Xdata, you only lose time for, for the serialization as JSON. Everything else is still gonna depend on your database architecture that you use and if you put some thought how to do that you're going to end up with a pretty performant database um, server access using xdata i think though we've gotten through all the questions uh you if you want to put your um email address in the chat box there people can uh can follow up with you if they have additional questions and uh yeah so thank you so much holger for putting this together and do let everybody know at TMS know that you have a lot of big fans uh, in our community and over here at Embarcadero as well. Thank you so much, Jim. And thank you for the opportunity to present all the great products for the different, for front end, back end, and uh, business logic. It was a great opportunity to basically present the whole toolbox because, be, without going into detail of all the different products.